As a believer, what does it mean to live a life of victory? And how do we do this in a world that seems to be only pulling away from the Bible? How do we overcome the decline of common decency and core values that are quickly diminishing in this nation? How do we combat the evil that is becoming so common in this day and age? How do we achieve success in our Father's kingdom? For these answers and much more, stay tuned for Living a Life of Victory on today's program. Tradition is one of the most stubborn of barriers when it comes to the truth, and we humans are addicted by habit to tradition. Everything we do in this life is a consequence, and the consequence is most great with our walk as believers. Be prepared for some startling discoveries when you open the scriptures for yourself. Welcome to another Discover the Truth. It's a blessing to be with you. I think most of us would all agree that the trends we're seeing right now in the world is concerning. For example, we're seeing a rise in radical Islam. Christianity and Bible believers are being ruthlessly attacked in the Middle East and throughout this world. In Europe, Canada, even here in this nation, are we seeing laws restricting Bible believers. Traditional marriage and values that once made this nation great are quickly being attacked. And the list goes on. What we're witnessing today is more than likely only going to become worse with time. Matter of fact, I really do wonder if we're seeing the signs of Elisha in the tribulation and second coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Here's what I know for sure. Now is not the time to be asleep or negligent with our faith. It's more important than ever before that we strengthen our faith and devotion. Truth be told, even though many of us are facing different challenges and trials, I don't know if any of us really knows the meaning of true persecution. If and when this day comes upon us as believers, we must be strong and show courage. Today I want to offer you a few tips that will hopefully strengthen you as a believer now and in the future. Time permitting, we're going to review the following. Most important, we need to know and understand the one we worship. We must be strong in faith and courage. We must be willing to make a distinction in our behavior and worship. And we must keep life into perspective, always maintaining proper balance. I believe that each one of these points are crucial if we're going to remain strong in the faith and live a life of victory. They will help us in our walk as believers and provide us the strength and character to overcome. I'd like to begin with 1 Chronicles 29, verse 11. It reads there, Thine, O Yahweh, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Yahweh, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come to thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our Elohim, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. What lesson do we find in this passage, or very simply put? Our Father Yahweh is above all. He is the greatest in all power, glory, and majesty on earth, and in the heavens belongs to him. Possibly the best illustration of our Father's awesome power is this universe. For thousands of years, man has been looking to the heavens to understand Yahweh's creation. Today we have massive telescopes, but even with these, we comprehend only a small fraction of what this universe offers. This complexity is so far beyond man's comprehension that it's hard to even fathom. For instance, consider the following information. It's believed that the number of atoms in this universe is somewhere around 10 to the 78th power. This is 10 with 78 zeros behind it. Such a number is beyond our comprehension. 
the believed diameter of the known universe is 93 billion light years. A light year is a distance light travels within a year. And miles, this number is 5.878499881 times 10 to the 12th power. Again, this is a number beyond our grasp. It's estimated that the Milky Way galaxy contains 200 to 400 billion stars. Overalls believe that this universe contains around 100 billion galaxies. Now, if this doesn't give us reason to pause and consider the greatness of our Father in Heaven, I'm not sure what would. It's important that we realize that all of this came into existence through the power of our Creator, Almighty Yahweh. Listen, if He can design and create such a vast universe, surely He's capable of seeing us through life's problems. Now saying that, as hard as it is, we need to also realize that sometimes it's His will that we suffer. We know that the Apostle Paul had a thorn in his flesh and prayed three times that Yahweh would remove it, where he never did. And Paul soon realized that he was made strong through this thorn or weakness. The fact remains, through our Father in Heaven, we have confidence He is bigger than anything else in this universe. He is in control of all that we see and all that we don't see. Even though this world can be a chaotic place, as long as we remember that we serve an awesome El, nothing should discourage us or pull us away from the faith. There is nothing beyond our Father's power control. He is all-knowing and all-powerful in all ways. We're going to stop here, and we're going to take a short break. We're going to be back, though. We're going to talk more about keys to success, living a life of victory, and how we are victorious in the truth of our Father in Heaven. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Today, a great majority of churchgoers are unaware of the feast days mentioned in both Old and New Testaments of the Bible. The Feast of Tabernacles, Passover, and the Feast of Trumpets all have great importance. When the Messiah returns, all people will observe the Feast of Tabernacles. Zechariah prophesied, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King Yahweh of hosts and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Today, most holiday replacements have origins directly from pagan influence and have no ties to end time prophecy and the second coming of the Messiah. If you have always wondered about these feasts, now's the time to reap the blessings. Uncover the prophetic significance of these important days and see the plan of salvation they have to offer by requesting a copy of our insightful booklet, The Amazing Biblical Feasts. It's free and we urge you to get it. To do so, call 573-896-1000 or request online at YRM.org. desire to better understand your Bible? If so, then you need the Restoration Times magazine. This insightful bi-monthly publication includes in-depth articles on proper living, prophetic trends, and biblical truth. It reveals how to have a real relationship with your Creator, what we must do to be saved, the meaning of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and much more. Only in the RT magazine will you get absolute clarity in Bible understanding, including how popular doctrine developed and why. You can read the Restoration Times magazine online at restorationtimes.org. Also, for those who give a gift of $25 or more, will receive a hard copy of this amazing resource. Don't delay. Open your mind to truth like never before by going online or giving to this important work. You can donate online at donate.yrm.org or by calling 1-573-896-1000 Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 Central. Welcome back. Now, another way of living a life of victory is by obeying our Father in Heaven. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, we find these words. We find there that when we follow Him, we're blessed. When we don't, we find that we're cursed. Here's what it says. 
It says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love Yahweh Elohim, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and Yahweh thy Elohim shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Yahweh confirms here that he's set before us life and good and death and evil. This tells me two things. Number one, he's given us a choice. And number two, these choices are not equal. Choice one is to follow him and, and obey his word. And choice two is to rebel and reject him. The first one leads to life and the other leads to death. Now there's also another reality within Yahweh's word. As our creator, he's established a natural order within this universe and his commandments, listen, are the guide to achieving success in this order. For example, he's given us commandments regarding our diet. He tells us within his word to avoid things like shellfish and pig, which medical science is now realizing are a detriment to man's health. For instance, here's uh, what Dr. Russell in his book, what the Bible says about healthy eating, says on this topic. He says one reason for, and he says that God's rule forbidding pork is that the digestive system of a pig is completely different from that of a cow. It is similar to ours in that the stomach is very acidic. Pigs are gluttonous, never knowing when to stop eating. Their stomach acids become diluted because of the volume of food, allowing all kinds of vermin to pass through this protective barrier. Parasites, bacteria, viruses, and toxins can pass into the pig's flesh because of overeating. These toxins and infectious agents can be passed onto humans when they eat a pig's flesh. Again, Yahweh as our Creator understood this, and for that reason He commanded that we abstain from swine or pork. It is a detriment to man's health. So in this case, when we obey Him, we're more likely to maintain better health. Yahweh also established marriage as a lifelong union between one man and one woman. If you consider the impact of divorce that we're seeing in this nation, whether that be single parent homes or broken families, there should be no wonder why He says what He does. Based on data from the 2010 census, one third, or a total of about 15 million children are without a father today in the home. Statistics have shown that a child suffers emotionally and socially without the influence of a father. Listen, everything he says within his word is for our good. The problem is most people are simply too stubborn to listen. I believe that the problem we see in this nation and throughout this world are the result of man's rejection of our Creator. You know, it's amazing, though, how many people in this nation are asking, why are these things happening? Even though the truth is obvious, they're blind to it. We find another benefit for obeying in Acts chapter 5, verse 32. It says there in Acts, very important book, by the way, Acts, Acts of the Apostles. But in Acts chapter 5, we find these words. It says, And we are His witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Spirit, whom Elohim hath given it to them that obey Him. We see here that the Holy Spirit, or the Ruach HaKodesh, is given to those who obey. Now what, is a benef now what benefit do we find through the Ruach HaKodesh? Where it brings us into deeper truths and helps us to change from who we are today into whom we should be based on Yahweh's will for us. It also gives us wisdom to rightly apply and understand our Father's Word. Finally, it offers encouragement and strength in those times of need and trouble. Another way of living a life of victory is by faith. Now before I explain why it's important to have faith, let me explain what faith is. We find a definition in the book of Hebrews. No one knows quite who wrote this book, but it is again a very intriguing book we find scripturally. But here's what it says in the book of Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now notice how the Bible defines faith. Number one, it's the substance of things hoped for. And number two, the evidence of things not seen. The first part here simply refers to believing in something, while the second part verifies that this belief isn't something we can't see. So in essence, faith is a believing or having a conviction in something that we can't see or that can't be seen. In this case, we know that this is a reference to Yahweh, our Father in Heaven, which Scripture says is invisible and immortal. Now in verse 6, we find another key truth about faith. It says, but without faith it is impossible, listen, impossible to please Him. 
For he that cometh to Elohim must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. According to what we find here, we can't please our Father in heaven and Creator without faith. We must not only believe that He exists, but is also a rewarder of those who follow Him. In other words, we must believe in Him and within His promises, including His promise of everlasting life in His kingdom. If we don't believe in these things and our faith is not genuine and not pleasing to the one we worship, since faith is again a belief and conviction in our Creator, you can see why this is essential in remaining strong as a believer. Now we're going to take another short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today, a great majority of churchgoers are unaware of the feast days mentioned in both Old and New Testaments of the Bible. The Feast of Tabernacles, Passover, and the Feast of Trumpets all have great importance. When the Messiah returns, all people will observe the Feast of Tabernacles. Zechariah prophesied, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Today, most holiday replacements have origins directly from pagan influence and have no ties to end-time prophecy and the second coming of the Messiah. If you have always wondered about these feasts, now's the time to reap the blessings. Uncover the prophetic significance of these important days and see the plan of salvation they have to offer by requesting a copy of our insightful booklet, The Amazing Biblical Feasts. It's free and we urge you to get it. To do so, call 573-896-1000 or request online at YRM.org. Welcome back. Now, another important attribute for living a life of victory is courage. Before we consider what the Bible says about this, let me provide you with a simple definition of what courage is. Courage is responding even in those moments when we're afraid. In other words, courage is not allowing fear to control our response. Now, our Father in Heaven speaks about courage in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, this is when the Israelites went into the Promised Land. It says this, Only be thou, uh, thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For Yahweh, thy Elohim, is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So what did Yahweh here tell Joshua? Number one, he told him to obey his commandments so that he would have success. We've already talked about the blessing of obeying our Father in heaven. In short, when we follow His commandments, we're going to be blessed and prosperous. Number two, Yahweh tells Joshua here to be strong and of good courage and not to be afraid. There's a connection here between faith and courage. To achieve either one, we must believe in Yahweh and within His promises. Listen, if we 
will have deep faith in our Father in heaven that even death itself should not concern us. The fact is, the Bible promises that those who lose their lives for His sake will find it in the life to come. Like faith, courage requires that we are resolute in our conviction of Yahweh and willing to do whatever is necessary to remain true to Him. If we allow fear to control us, then we may never achieve the goal of everlasting life. Now remember who Yahweh gave this message to. It was given to Joshua. This man had the task of not only leading a nation, but doing so during a time of conquest. He was going to war for the nation of Israel and for his Father in heaven. He would risk everything to obey the one he worshipped. Yahweh knew that this time would require strength and courage like never before. If indeed Yahshua's coming is closer than what many realize, we as believers will require this same level of courage and faith as this time approaches. Yahshua in the Olivet Prophecy stated that the Great Tribulation would be the worst time this world has ever seen and will ever see. Nothing will rival the sin, the depravity, and the persecution that this world will see prior to Yahshua's coming. As I said, the challenges that we go through today are really nothing when compared to the tribulation we might see in the days to come. Joshua showed courage and strength against nations and peoples greater than him. Can we do the same? Now, another key in living a life of victory is to show a distinction. In 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, we find Paul stating that we must show a difference between us and the world. Here's what he says in the second book of Corinthians. He says, There be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Messiah with Belial? Or what part hath he that believes with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of Elohim with idols? For you are the temple of the living Elohim. Many of us are probably familiar with this passage. In a nutshell, Paul says here that we must make a distinction between us and the world. He again asks here, What communion hath light with darkness, and what concord has Messiah with Belial? By the way, the word Belial here is a euphemism for Satan the devil. You know, we don't have to look too hard to see sin and immorality in this world today. In the last few decades, we've seen a lot of change in this nation and in this world. Many people no longer know what is morally right in this day and age. The concept of absolute morality has been thrown out the window. Today is a day of diversity and of political correctness. It seems that everything we read in the Bible regarding immorality is happening today, including the acceptance of sodomy or homosexual marriage. As we find in the fifth chapter of Isaiah, they call evil good and good evil. I believe that we may be witnessing the final collapse of biblical values in this nation. This is why it's so important that we make a separation and distinction between us and the world. Listen, just because we live in the world doesn't mean we live like the world. We must show a difference and distinction in what we watch, what we listen to, how we behave, and most importantly, how we worship. And that's why we're here to discover the truth, to show that distinction, to show you and to explain the word of Yahweh, to explain the truth of our Father in heaven. We pray that you have enjoyed this program today and that you would join us every week. Now, we have a, a gift, a, a special something for you today. We're going to close with a song, original song with, from Brother Clayton Douglas, and the title is Yahshua HaMashiach, or Yahshua the Messiah. Have a great week. Yahweh bless. Bye-bye. Yeshua, Yeshua, Messiah. patience. Yeshua, Yeshua, you're my Savior and my King at your coming, your voice will thunder.
free offer call now operators are standing by dial 1-573-896-1000 or write to the address on your screen request online by visiting one of the most extensive religious websites on the internet yrm.org help support discover the truth donate by credit card by calling during regular office hours monday through friday 8 a.m to 4 p.m central time or give online donate.yrm.org for a one-time yearly donation of $25 or more, we would like to send you a gift, a one-year subscription to our bi-monthly Restoration Times magazine. This magazine will unlock Bible truth that will simply amaze you. For more information or to read online, visit restorationtimes.org. Join us again next week as we take you on a journey of understanding, walking the pathways of the Messiah and his apostles, exploring the Hebraic origins of the faith, and carving away man's tradition as we discover the truth.